It is August 1st, 2022, and you're here with us on a brand new episode of Crime After Crime. I'm John Lorden. And I am Daniel Hallen, and welcome, or welcome back. Yeah, hopefully welcome back, but if you're new, welcome, and boy, do you have a lot to catch up on. Mm-hmm. Buckle in. It's a wild yeah. ride. Over 40 other episodes there waiting for you to get through them. Danielle! Uh, I think for this episode, we got to get right to these results because mm -hmm. Canadian crimes. Good episode. Really, really good episode. Maybe one of my favorite thumbnails. Mm -hmm. What'd you think of the thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. That's about it. <laughs> yep. I'll take it. That's a good reaction. I thought so too. Um, all right. So let's do it. The results from the last episode, Canadian crimes. Danielle told the story mm -hmm. of the maple syrup mm -hmm. industry, which was a whole story in itself. I'm telling you. But also an elaborate heist to steal their sweet, tasty goodness. And I told the story of a worker at the Canadian Mint who was sneaking gold out of the facility by putting it in his prison wallet. <laughs> now, we had a goof in our first Twitter poll. Uh, it ended after only one day. And what happened was it came out to a 50-50 tie. And then I got a bunch of tweets about, hey, John, you screwed up because the, the poll was only open for one day. <laughs> John, uh, you messed up. What are you doing? <laughs> I did. I know. I love how you're immediately blamed. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, so we did start another poll. <clears throat> we ran that for seven more days. And this was over the um, 4th of July weekend, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so we ran it for seven more days. How did it all play out, Danielle? All right, you guys. So on the second Twitter poll, I received 55% of the votes Ooh. and John received 45% of the votes. Oh man. Don't let that fool you. What? Don't let it. Mm -hmm. So by some crazy chance, AKA John's out here doing witchcraft or something uh -oh. on the website poll, I received 37% of the votes and John came back in with 63%. So when that happens, we have to go by votes. Okay. Down yeah, because that's super gritty. rare. Yeah. It's, I think mm. this is only Isn't maybe like the, the second or third time. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. That's it. It doesn't happen very often that mm -mm. one poll goes one way, the other goes another. Okay. I always love it when it does, though. It has I know, some spice. There's like some pizzazz happening. Yeah, now we got to get it down to votes. Mm -hmm. All right. So when it's down to the votes, there were 177 votes for me and 254 john Woo. so deserving that story blew me away i laughed about it for an eternity everyone i know knows about it yeah yeah i was telling people about it too i couldn't stop once i started I know. talking about it and my yeah. favorite part is i get through most of it i'm like and then do you know what they did they made <laughs> someone test it out do you believe that that I'm never is, getting over that part. <laughs> no, and I still want to know how they pick that person. Like, is it just the worst employee? <laughs> hey, we need you to test something. Here, put this gold where the sun don't shine and walk through this exactly. metal detector. Oh, goodness. Well, wow. Well, thank you to everyone who voted for me. Appreciate it. And Danielle. Take oh. your mug. Oh, there. That was the worst mug handoff I've ever the seen. Best. It was the best one. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> For anyone listening, great. Yeah, it was flawless. <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast, it was absolutely flawless. Don't watch the YouTube video. No. Mm -mm. Oh. Just go, go with our word. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on to today's topic. Today, we are looking into YouTube criminals. And boy, did this search turn my stomach. <laughs> yeah. Danielle, how did you feel about this looking into it? I don't know. I feel like there was this really optimistic part of me that felt like I was going to run into a bunch of really silly things because, I mean, we've done plenty of researches, you know, before for videos and run into YouTube or criminals or, you know, something involving social media and the things that people do for views or, you know, all these, I don't know. And it's usually something silly. Yeah. But when we really got to the nitty gritty of this research, it's dark. It's very dark. Yeah. Incredibly and, dark. Yeah. In a way that was completely unexpected. Like we, with oh, the yeah. topics that we've gone through before, um, I would expect to see some of that type of stuff show mm -hmm. up, you know, for yeah. like when we did the world's worst alibi or like stuff like, you know, okay, you're going to bump into those kind of serious stories. There was this weird fusion with mm -hmm. this search of when you combine, you know, YouTuber with crime, 
it just uh, guys we were i was flipping through stories mm, yeah about mass murderers uh mass shootings animal abuse mm. uh family members being killed like it was really really dark yeah um, like pranks that are purposely done to harm oh oh the ooh, whole prank it was movement so rough yeah i mean the whole prank movement mm. like there was honestly right around the time that i was coming on like the pranks thing was still playing out on youtube there was yeah. a lot of very very successful channels that were doing these kind of pranks and you guys might have heard stories about like wasn't there there was one guy that was running around like um i think he was just kissing random women or at least yeah, that's what the prank rife. was supposed to look like like who and thinks that that oh. I know, I know. Well, and even if you're staging it, right? Mm -hmm. Like even if, okay, this is this has been talked out in advance. This person knows what's going to happen. She knows some guy's going to come up and kiss her and it's going to wind up on a YouTube video. She's being paid yeah. $200 for the shoot, whatever. You're still putting it out in the public under the pretense of this is something I do. I just walk down the street, I grab a random girl and I kiss her. And can I tell you, and this is why I have it out for that genre is yeah. as a parent, mm -hmm. my children don't understand that. Absolutely. And so I cannot tell you how many times I have seen Raylan or someone try to play a prank that they have seen on a YouTube channel. And it's, they don't understand how wildly inappropriate or harmful it is. And they're young, so they don't know, but like things that could end up really hurting someone. And they're like, but I saw someone prank someone on YouTube. And I'm like, you cannot, do this yeah. in real life like these people are either aware these pranks are happening on them or they're not and whoever started it got in trouble well and i'll take Ooh. it one further i mean not mm -hmm. even you're, yes you're making a huge point mm -hmm. a very good point about children but i know there's adults there the yep. same way they're just mm -hmm. viewing this as oh look this person was able to do that i'm gonna go do the same thing and youtube <sighs> already has a culture of someone does something or puts something out and then someone comes along and mimics it I mean, yeah. there's there's whole channels that are essentially just mimics of other channels. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is a very it's a dicey, dicey thing. I'm thankful that YouTube has really kind of cracked down on a lot of those um, kind of underproduced prank channels because that's where yeah. they were. You know, people were trying to do like the <clears throat> exactly. most extreme stuff for attention. Mm -hmm. Now, like you know, there's there's people doing pranks, but they're kind of like sponsored by Microsoft. We're bringing yeah. this video gamer in, and we're going to dump water on them while they're playing a video game, or like it's yep. it's just in a different place. Thankfully, <laughs> um, you guys know us. We we have mm -hmm. we have a knack for uh, trying to bring you guys the right stories that maybe there's some lessons in, mm -hmm. but we can at least have a little fun with as we're going through those as well. Yeah, I think we found those, but just know these will not be the most extreme. Uh, YouTube crime stories that you've ever heard of because yeah. uh, quite honestly, I don't know. I wouldn't want to listen to that show. I don't, I don't know not. about you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no. there's terrible, terrible things. Mm -hmm. There's a strange fusion between people motivating something that they want in some way yeah. with an aspect of I could become famous from doing this this way. Yep. And it leads people to do really crazy, crazy, bizarre things. We still have that aspect. It just creates this disconnect in people. Yeah. And it's so weird because it happens to, it can happen to anyone, I feel like. And it's very I scary. I do too. I, it, there's, there's this other aspect of, I think when you're first coming into social media, mm -hmm of learning about that, about the yeah. little attention monster within yourself and what mm -hmm. they're driving towards mm -hmm. and how to feed that or control it or or vent it to a more appropriate outlet, something like yeah. that, that um, I think a lot of people have to learn on their way into social media. But Oh yeah. So uh, not to discount today's, I mean, I'm telling you guys, I can't wait to tell you my story. Oh, I know, me too. <laughs> I found a great one. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get it started. Let's kick it off with a case told by the amazing Danielle Hallen. All right, you guys. Now, despite everything that we just said, YouTube is a glorious place. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Ignore everything that we just said. It's still true, <laughs> but... <laughs> It is. It's, you know, it's a place where you can share the things that you love, which is what made me fall in love with YouTube, you know, let out your creativity and essentially the sky is the limit. And there's also this aspect where if you have a business, you know, you can take it to the next level, open the door to opportunities, you know, you can offer a place to showcase your rise to fame. 
And that happened very quickly for 34-year-old Bill Omar Carrasquillo. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his last name right. Okay. So Omar grew up in the northern part of Philly, all right? And by the age of nine, he unfortunately was made very familiar with the drug trade after being shown the ropes by his own father. So at such a young age, he's playing this huge part in selling drugs and ultimately ended up falling headfirst into it as a means of making money. Mm. Now, seeing how lucrative a business it was and being roped into it for so many years, he ended up dropping out of high school in the 11th grade to spend more time bringing in cash. But with all of that reward, obviously there is risk. So as I'm sure you can imagine, he ended up landing himself in in jail on drug charges. Okay. Now, once Omar was finally released, he continued on his ways until 2014 at the age of 28 when he's like, you know what? This is not what I want for my life. He wanted to legally make money to take care of his family, to build something bigger for himself. So he made his very last drug sale and he set his eyes on other ways to support himself. Now, initially, he began to dabble in selling DVDs as a source of income. He also started to sell things on Amazon and Craigslist. And he kind of realized during all of this how easy it was to buy things for cheap and resell them without much effort going into it, all making a pretty decent profit. And he had turned his life around. That's a huge thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. But he was still craving more. He wanted his own successful business and to make a name for himself. So after some planning with two associates, he decided to create an app called Gears TV, which I had never heard of that. Mm -mm. Everyone I brought this up to was like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, wait, what? Oh, I know. So Gears TV was an IPTV or Internet Protocol television service. It's a completely legal way to distribute and stream content. So movies, TV shows, things along those lines. But the provider has to have a license and permission from hosts to stream the content. You know, all that copyright. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And for example, just to kind of make it more clear, Netflix, that's an IPTV. Disney Mm -hmm. Plus, Peacock, like all of your typical favorite streaming services. And so it's a great way to make money. I mean, we've even seen that over the past couple of years. No one wants to wait around, okay, for the right TV show to come back on schedule, okay? I will never forget those days and I never want them back, (laughs) all right? I want every option at my fingertips so I can binge watch whatever I want whenever I want, okay? That was the goal for Gears TV to create the streaming service at an affordable price so everyone could enjoy it. The streaming service would be set up in the same on-demand style and hopefully would be successful, so they launched it in 2016. Now, thankfully, Omar had a great way to help promote it. YouTube. Sure, absolutely. Ultimate promotional. Yeah. Ultimate promotional advice there. Now, he had apparently been posting content to YouTube for a while. He only had like a handful of subscribers and he showcased basically on this YouTube channel the entire creation of Gears TV, start to finish. People love that sort of thing, okay? Mm -hmm. So slowly the word began to spread and more and more people began to subscribe to his channel and also to the service. Now, as the money began to roll in from the service, the YouTube content just got better. There's always that like, I know you know what I mean, that give and take there. So now suddenly Omar, who is known as Omi and a Hellcat on YouTube, began to flaunt that money he was making, put it into those YouTube videos, get people's attention. So he began to purchase luxury cars. Soon he moved into this massive, beautiful home. And when it within the first year of Gears TV being up and running, he went from selling DVDs for a handful of cash to being a millionaire. Wow. Wow. That's the American dream. There, I'm the, telling you. Yeah. Yep. So soon his channel grew to half a million and then it's at 800,000 and the viewers absolutely loved the well-produced videos. They got to watch him kind of start at the bottom and work his way up. Um, I've watched a handful of his videos at this point. There's drone shots uh, that show him like going into his house. Uh, His neighbors refer to his home as the car lot (laughs) because he's got so many cars. All of his rotating vehicles are parked along the driveway, the yard, down the road. And I'm not talking like 10. I'm talking like over 50. Wow. Wow. Cars. And like 
expect like Porsches. I mean, you name it, he's got it. And then Omar greets his viewers with a huge smile. He's got chains and diamonds that I mean, just live in the dream on YouTube, right? He had no hesitation at all while on YouTube, constantly promoting his streaming service. Um, so, I mean, obviously he's dropping some self promo there. Every mm -hmm. other YouTuber ever does that. <laughs> Yeah. While also occasionally giving back to the community, kind of like Mr. Beast style. Honestly, after watching his videos, I totally understand how he gained such a following. Okay. It feels like you're talking to a best friend. Yeah. <laughs> he always has something super wise to say, uh, just life advice that pretty much anyone can resonate with. And he sets this really good example of how he grew up one way broke free of that and then made something for himself. And so it feels really inspirational when you watch any of his videos. They're not just these pointless videos. Most of it is him having deep conversations with his viewers, right? <clears throat> I mean, obviously he's in very expensive cars, mm -hmm. <laughs> nine times out of 10, but. So during this time, Gears TV rebranded a few times. I think it was like Gears Reloaded and then reboot and a handful of other names but it was still up and running and omar had began he started to branch out you know he's using this money to invest in other projects because hello businessman um he created a clothing brand he began to purchase real estate all around philly i think he even owned a restaurant at some point but in 2019 his world was flipped upside down okay I feel I mean, like this is a quick turn. Like he's getting started yeah, in what, this 2016? Is, yeah. And I mean, yeah. it's just woo, rise and very quick fall. Okay. So in November of 2019, the FBI unexpectedly raided his home. And in true YouTuber fashion, all of you already know what I'm going to say. It was live streamed. <laughs> yeah. He live streamed it. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so it was a very chaotic scene. Actually, I only watched a portion of the video, but it was clear that no one really knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like no one had any idea why Omar was handcuffed in the living room. Like, why are you like arresting us? What's happening? And shortly after this, it became clear in his next few videos, exactly what was going on. Cause he was very open about everything that was happening. The FBI was accusing Omar of one of the largest pirating schemes that they had ever seen. Uh, okay, for the for <clears throat> the TV channel? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. I was wondering about the content. Like, you don't just come up with content for a service like that. Okay. So, when the FBI raided the home, they took over $35 million in assets, okay? Over four dozen properties that Omar owned. 57 cars okay wow two of those cars had a hundred thousand dollars in cash inside of them and then the <laughs> fbi i i know i'm over here like what is going on <laughs> i've got no place to put this <clears throat> i'll just leave I'm it in the gonna... glove compartment yeah <sighs> i know blew my mind and then the fbi also seized a bank account with over 5.2 million dollars in it so the allegations were that Omar and his two partners, Jesse Gonzalez from California and Michael Barone of New York had been operating this multi-million dollar streaming company by stealing signals from legitimate companies and retransmitting them. Ah, uh, wow. So that wow. Were the, those were the accusations, but right away, Omar defiantly claimed that he had done absolutely nothing wrong, okay? In an interview afterwards, he said, quote, it was a straight streaming app. I wasn't stealing channels. I was paying for my cable boxes. I was paying for my cable service. And that's why I'm so comfortable talking about it. And after all, I mean, you know, when you've got 800,000 followers, like you're almost at 1 million, you know, he had over 1 million followers on Instagram. Yeah. It's not like he was trying to hide this. And most people you would think have enough common sense to not flaunt something that they are illegally doing. Sure, sure. You would hope. <laughs> Granted, this this whole podcast has taught me otherwise, but I mean, it just didn't seem like he was trying to hide anything, like he did anything wrong. Now, apparently, instead of getting the proper licenses and permissions that we spoke about in the beginning of this video, Omar found a loophole. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So right. this loophole, he believed, and I emphasize that very strongly. <laughs> yeah allowed him to share legally purchased content. So he did purchase his cable boxes and all of that. 
and then share it as if you were watching a movie with a friend. Okay. So that's kind of the loophole he's going for, which by the way is used time and time again. Just And honestly, like I think <clears throat> if you go to Twitch right now, yeah. y- you will find someone doing that. And even on YouTube, like yep. when there's a, you know, Johnny Depp trial and stuff like that, mm-hmm. there's people that are rerunning uh live streams of Court TV. Um yeah, yep. that that stuff happens. It still happens. It is. It's yeah. I mean, it's a, it is a real loophole ish. We'll kind of get into that. Okay. Now Apparently, from creating this idea, Omar, Jesse, and Michael began to purchase different cable and streaming services from their specific locations. So, like Comcast, DirecTV, Verizon, Charter, you name it. Like, everything out there, they are purchasing the services from. Now, once they had legally purchased their own access, they would then set up these cable boxes with these different services and make it so that the content from them could be shared over i think like their seven plus homes in those different states that they stayed in and so once this worked out well this is where things get a little uh questionable they were like okay this works so they purchased an encoder from china Mm. to strip the content of copyright protections yeah so that it could be broadcast to a larger audience and raise no red flags i'm saying this i had to look all of this up and you're over here like yeah (laughs) Absolutely. Oh, this makes no, well, sense. I know about this. Yeah. I mean, just being able to try to get a video game like to show up yeah. on, on my live stream and stuff like that. Like you have to deal with HDCP uh, copyright protections. And yeah, yeah. It's, and I used to work at cable box industry. So, yeah, I know yeah. about that. Yeah. So, I mean, they're like, OK, if we can strip it of the copyright protections, you know, we're <laughs> technically legally buying it and just sharing it, you know, no red flags. Right. Um, And so because of this, they were able to share that content and copy it to computer servers, send it out everywhere. Gears TV was born. Okay. Right. right. So subscribers to the service paid $15 a month to access pretty much all the content you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. So from honestly, from what it seemed like, I mean, Netflix, you can only watch like certain things they choose to put on there. Essentially anything you could get from anywhere they gave you access to. So like every TV show. Every yep. single movie. There was, the sky's the limit, right? Okay. So according to the FBI, you know, one of the biggest things they did was they did not make it clear when purchasing this content that they had intention to distribute it or redistribute it. So the FBI is like, there is no loophole here. They were supposed to state that they didn't. This is against the law. So Bradley Benavides from the Philly FBI office said, quote, you can't just go and monetize someone else's copyrighted content without impunity. Theft is theft. If you're going to willfully steal another party's intellectual property, the FBI stands ready to step in and shut you down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he meant absolute business. Now, Omar continued to state, despite all of this, that what he did was fully legal and that he simply had found this loophole and went for it. And I mean, he's making videos left and right, openly talking about all this. Like he's not stopping his YouTube channel. He's letting everyone know about everything. Yeah. He claimed initially that the FBI was only interested in Gears TV because he was a black male that came from a really rough background and that he made it um, and that they just didn't like him making money. He said, quote, I found a loophole. I ran through it and did great. There are other colleagues in the same business I was in and they never got in trouble with the FBI. So that was his biggest argument that nothing he did is wrong. He has this loophole, other people are doing it and they're just mad at him because he made a lot of money really quickly with it. And there's, so a, his... there's a bit of a point there <clears throat> in that <throat> the monetization aspect really changes it because Absolutely. there is, um, there are services that I've heard of that, you know, like if I wanted to help support this service, mm-hmm. I would maybe record some favorite TV shows and make them available for this service to suck up and then other people could watch it. But there's no resale happening there. It's literally more like a video sharing, like, hey, I'm gonna watch my favorite show that you recorded. You're gonna watch your favorite show that I recorded. Um, I still think there's there's probably legal stuff tied up with that. But having a a payment layer there just complete, because those contracts, they're right. When you're getting your local cable or something like that, you're getting like a viewership contract. You're not getting mm-hmm. a redistribute or rebroadcast. Those are completely yep. separate deals. Um, unless their lawyers were bad enough that they left a clause out that stops that from happening. 
I can't believe that that would happen, but I don't know. How does, yeah. this, how does this story continue, Danielle? I'm not sure. Got me on the edge of my seat now. I know. You're like, I'm, I'm interested. So, yeah. I mean, he had his supporters backing him, 800,000 people that are like, you didn't do anything wrong. You know, he's continuing to make these videos on YouTube the entire time. And the investigation ended up going on for two years. Wow. But the issue was apparently a lot more complex than anyone knew. So in a gripping video that Omar posted, he stated that he was likely going to jail for a few years. And everyone's like, well, why are you saying that if you're also saying that you didn't do anything wrong? Now, apparently on top of running this pirating scheme, he also had not paid any taxes on the money that he made through Gears TV. Ooh. So, and he had made, I think, like $500 a year from YouTube prior to Gears TV. Yeah. And every single thing that he owned... <laughs> was from the money he made on Gears TV, which was an illegal business. So that was kind of throwing this whole other aspect into the mix. So on September 21st, 2021, Omar and his associates were arrested. They were charged with conspiracy to commit copyright violations, fraud, and then obviously he also was charged with tax evasion. But despite the solid charges, after a lengthy investigation, Omar was still maintaining his innocence. His attorney said, quote, there were no regulations when he did it. We will prove the charges he received do not apply to his conduct. They continue to argue that there was this gray area. Meanwhile, that gray area was actually legally being addressed. Like there was an ongoing thing while all this is happening to treat this type of streaming as a felony. Okay. There's obviously all these places like Netflix and, you know, IPTVs that are using, doing things properly. But then there's places like Jetflix, <clears throat> which, yes, was a real thing run by multiple individuals. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's literally the name of it. They were trying to use these loopholes with the same thing, saying, oh, but we're just sharing it like we're sharing things with a friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they were hoping that changing the charges to felony, a felony instead of a misdemeanor would seal up those or well, would on top of sealing up those holes help end pirating, essentially. So in 2020, yeah. during the midst of this, the Protecting Lawful Streaming Act was made public law to hopefully take down these operations. Now, it made it so that anyone distributing copyright work for financial gain would immediately get three years in prison. If pre-release content was involved, the time jumps to five years, and then repeat offenders, it's 10 years. Okay. Which honestly is scary. I feel like not enough people understand. I feel like it's one of those crimes where it's so easy to commit it. Does that make mm -hmm. any sense? I hate oh, yeah. saying it that way, but like it's so easy to do that you would never think how badly it affects other people Yeah. and the legal yeah. trouble you can get in. <clears throat> well, so uh, on the sharing aspect you're right like you know setting up a personal media server um mm -hmm. you know i mean anyone that <laughs> has done anything with their pc and yeah. connecting it to their entertainment center upstairs <clears throat> or something like yeah you're setting up a media server and mm -hmm. you're setting a stream that's going to go send to that tv so what's the difference in if if i'm away from home like let's mm -hmm. say i'm in vegas with my laptop and I connect to a VPN back into my home here and I stream my favorite TV shows that are mm -hmm. on my media server and I'm watching them out in Vegas. So on the sharing front, you're right. Like the simplicity and how easy it is to do that is yeah. all there. What's really the twist in this that I keep seeing is the monetization. Like, yeah, exactly. It's not the same as, oh, I'm letting, I'm, I'm watching something with my friend uh, because your friend isn't paying you 15 bucks a month. <laughs> to have oh access gosh. to your entire <clears throat> media library. Yeah. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not the same. Yeah, it's different. I mean, if, yeah, you have friends come over and you watch the, yeah. the latest movie on Paramount Plus and they're not subscribers and you are, is that necessarily a crime? No, even mm -hmm. going to their house and saying, hey, we're gonna log in on my account and we're gonna watch something together, still fair use, fair and legal, mm -hmm. but I'm going to their house. Okay, we're gonna log in on mine uh, we're going to watch the latest Beavis and Butthead movie and you guys need to pay me 15 bucks each for the ticket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that fine line, man. Yeah. But I'm telling you, some people cross it not thinking oh, God, anything. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, so yeah. hearing those years and like thinking about that, I'm like, no, don't do it. Stop. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so it seemed pretty much as soon as these charges were dropped on him, 
Omar kind of realized that maybe what he was doing wasn't legal after all. <laughs> so he began to create videos speaking about how he planned to plead guilty. And sure enough, in February of 2022, he did just that. However, it's unknown what charges in specific he pleaded to because everything is sealed. Mm. Everything, okay? The plea deal that he took, apparently, sealed nothing came out so his viewers were absolutely shocked okay because for the last two years yeah he's, they're he's like ah yeah. yeah and you know omar spoke constantly about fighting back not backing down you know was telling them everything standing up for himself you know and that he did nothing wrong so him pleading guilty is totally unexpected and then it seems also like so hush hush it was strange and even more strange the sentencing was on june 8th Okay, so just two months ago, mm -hmm. I cannot find anywhere what the sentencing was. Hmm. It's nowhere. Um, welfare check on Omar? <clears throat> can we get the welfare check? Make well, sure I'm telling didn't you, dis get disappeared. <laughs> I'm look, I'm being so serious. Okay, there's no lack of speculation, right? Yeah. Um, because the original charges that he was facing, 514 years in prison. Hmm. Okay. That's what he was originally facing, okay? Yeah. And then randomly in February of 2022, he states in a video that he's facing 10 years in prison. So a lot of people believe this has something to do with the plea deal. And that exact same video, he's speaking about how it sucks to have to lose homes and money and cars. So a lot of people started to believe as well that maybe he was going to scathe by by just giving all those things back and paying the amount he made off, which by the way, it was $34 million. <laughs> <laughs> and that would make sense because in an interview, he had stated that he wasn't a danger. He's like, look, what I did was wrong, but I don't think I deserve a prison sentence for it. You know, I'm not going to harm anybody. I'm more than happy to pay back whatever I owe. I've learned my lesson and then I'll go about my way. So, I mean, there's all the speculation out there. And then, I mean, he, it was just weird. Okay. Very weird. And I think the last video that he posted was on like the 15th of June and he hasn't posted anything else since. So hmm. he could be in prison. I don't know. I've got no idea. Wow. Now, when he was asked afterwards, you know, after he decided to plead guilty, why the sudden change of heart? He did state that he watched, and I don't know why I thought this was funny. It's not funny. It just, <laughs> it was just my reaction. He said that he watched the behind the scenes documentary on Disney Plus, Meet the Creators. Okay. I think it was just ironic, and that's why I laughed. Yeah. Yeah. Because Disney Plus is an IPTV. Anyways, yeah. so the, th the thousands, he started speaking about the thousands of people in place to make sure every single detail is correct. All of the work and the effort that goes into creating something like that, and specifically in animation, it's like over five years from start to finish, so many people involved. And he said, quote, think about all the money they're investing and all of the people running back and forth. Imagine what a copyright holder has to go through. Toward the beginning, I felt like what I did wasn't illegal, but the more I sit back and dwell on it, I realize I was feeding myself bull shenike. That, I mean, he's literally just verbatim <clears throat> giving you the line from, do you remember all the anti-piracy commercials that would run before movies? Like when you go to the movie theater or like watch one at home and it'd be mm -hmm. like, I'm Ben Affleck. <clears throat> I'm here to tell you that, you know, the movie you're watching helped pay for 10,000 jobs, including security guys, caterers. Yeah. Well, there's he like, uh, it's funny that you bring that up because there's like this big conspiracy that he basically i don't know that there's some weird thing going on to where he's just being paid to now use his position to be anti-piracy but he's not telling anyone that's what's going on i don't know i didn't look too deep into that but there's like this whole conspiracy theory going on behind it saying like did you hear what he's saying he sounds like he's <laughs> regurgitating what the fbi is telling him so i think yeah. it's funny i think it's funny that you said that oh because, it, like, i mean it sounds like it, it sounds exactly like yeah. one of those scripts for one of those ads i'm hurting I mean, so just, many people yeah oh my gosh and like total turnaround and but mm -hmm. like there is this part of me that's hopeful though that's like Maybe he did realize. I don't know. That's just me. I see the best of everything. Yeah. Um, but he mm. also did bring like a personal aspect into it and said that he had experienced the other side of this. So he has a clothing brand called Reloaded. And I guess a while after they started, 
someone came after him legally because they claimed he was taking their designs and ideas and all of that and they had copyrighted it and according to him like he had already created this and it was the opposite they took his stuff and then managed to get it copyright before he was able to you can't get a copyright if you can prove that it existed before they <clears throat> filed that copyright it breaks it so yeah but yeah. he was like they you know he showed all these receipts and all this stuff saying that he had had this in production for a while at this point they didn't even start putting their stuff out until months later and like all this stuff but he was like you know it felt awful because all of this work that we had done you know was taken from us and all this so um i don't know but some feel you know he just decided to plead guilty because there's some weird deal going on i know that one of his partners decided to plead guilty a month prior so yeah. some people think that maybe has something to do with it he did state in some interview that everyone was basically pleading guilty and so he felt like he had not had to but like his wording was weird. I didn't write down the, the quote, but it thing, was it is weird. It was weird. Because there's no reason for them to even take a plea deal from him. Like if they really had it locked in and if those contracts that you would, you know, for your mm -hmm. little local internet cable service were solid, they wouldn't have had to agree to anything. Why are you going to yeah. take any unless you just want to avoid the the court case in in which case yeah, you might take a plea deal, but it's going to be still on a bunch of serious charges and there's going to yeah. be a big fixed sentence attached to it. The mm -hmm. the hush aspect makes it sound like there's something about this story that they don't want to come out. Yeah. And it might be that those contracts weren't as strong as they thought they were and that he did actually find some form Maybe not something that would completely um, excuse it's what you did. It's still shady. Yeah, but like he did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but maybe he found something that could be damaging in a different way. Mm -hmm. If everyone knew, oh, that that cable contract I'm on up to, up until this point, it didn't matter if I did this or did that. Uh, almost like they wanted to stop like a class yeah. action. You yeah, know? which That's honestly, why you would hush it. if you yeah. listen to like the way he spoke about the charges, like right afterwards or after not the charges, but after they raided his home, I mean, he is so dead set on the fact that he did nothing wrong, and yeah. he acknowledged from the get go. He's like, I found a loophole, and I use the heck out of it <laughs> yeah and yeah. you know and he's like maybe it wasn't the best decision but i did what i did now i will say while everything is hush hush one of his associates didn't actually decide to plead guilty mm. but he said it as if i don't know i don't know if someone told him that he was going to he goes to trial next month okay all so right. i'm <clears throat> i know so i'm like over here like all right i might be fine <laughs> yeah i need to figure out what's going on here so i mean i don't know because omar hasn't posted anything to his youtube channel since the 15th like i said of june i mean i don't know but i will say that prior to that he really did take a lot of time to tell people to not make the same mistakes he did which regardless of if he did find a loophole or not i have to applaud him for that you know and he was like yeah. i had to hustle and learn how to hustle and have hustled my whole entire life right i know the excitement of making money easy and fast um but most of the time it's not worth it and he spoke about how of course bad pirating is and you know was trying to convince his audience to just make better choices and he was just kind of really honest and down to earth in my opinion from what i heard just saying look like I showed you all the good. Unfortunately, life also comes with ugly and I have to address that as well. This is what's happening. Um, and I don't know, from a quick view at his comments though, I mean, despite the mistakes that he made and owning up to that, he still does seem to be making a very positive impact. There were a lot of comments. I mean, most of them, it was actually kind of cool to read through them. Of all of these <clears throat> younger individuals that were like, you know, I just want to let you know that I was so inspired by all your content and all the conversations that you have and pushing me to like move past my past to something better. I was just able to buy a house. And I'm 23. Um, you know, I just started my own business legally, just yeah. FYI. <clears throat> um, but basically saying, you know, I've got goals. I have all these things that I'm achieving and have plans to achieve because you shared your journey, essentially. And, you know, so i mean his channel did so much good for a lot of people so i will say that now i'm not sure how long he'll be away for or if he even <laughs> is away or what is going on i don't know where he is or what he's doing um but i don't doubt that he will come back 
and continue to, you know, talk about what happened, possibly better himself. Honestly, as a fellow YouTuber, it's not easy to admit your wrongdoings. It's really not. Like, even if you do genuinely, like, want to talk about it, doesn't make it easy to do it. So I really do applaud him for that, for taking the time and, you know, taking an opportunity to encourage those that look up to him to not make the same mistakes. But well, maybe maybe in this, I mean, because honestly, his whole career that you've charted for us is him reselling. He's reselling drugs. Yeah. He's reselling DVDs. He's yeah. reselling other people's content. Mm -hmm. But in that, maybe this format that he found on YouTube is an original point of creation that yeah. he can lean into and become exactly. part of and make that his next success. That's what I'm hoping out of. Out That's of that what I'm story. hoping. That's what I'm hoping as well. And like, it yeah. does seem like he was. I mean, when you're good at something, you're good at something. And unfortunately, when that's all you've known your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it. he I think he was attempting to do it the right ish way, you know, but unfortunately, it's that is what we keep talking about, that draw of money and fame yeah. and all these nice things. It, it can just pull at you. And then sometimes the lines get blurred. And well, and there is an interesting aspect of like looking for a lottery ticket. You know, like, I'm just going to do this thing and then it's going to be this big windfall. And and he had that happen. But the lottery ticket that he was playing on wasn't necessarily legal. So it's. No. Uh, mm. It was a super bittersweet story. I don't know. It made me it left yeah. me feeling really. I, I even questioned posting about it because, I mean, when you first read about it, it talks about like how awful he was in this huge scheme that he had you know and but then like i started watching his content and then seeing like the positive things that he was saying and like the people he was impacting positively in the comment section and it left me feeling so conflicted and strange <laughs> and i was like this is such a weird bittersweet situation yeah and you know unfortunately youtube fueling that negative fire probably didn't help anything so yeah yeah hmm well i wonder if in my story, there's going to be an aspect of a lottery ticket, someone oh, looking boy. for something out of the platform like that. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised, Danielle, but you're going to have to come back after the episode break to find out. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to my cooking channel. I'm Lord and Ramsey. Subscribe and smash that like button while we get to an unboxing countdown reaction cooking video sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh wants you to know that summer is almost over, but you can soak up the last of the summer sun and summer yum with HelloFresh. I refilled my water, John. Um were you just pretending to have a cooking channel again? What what are you what are you talking about? I was just waiting for you so we could tell everyone about HelloFresh. Are you sure it wasn't the Lord and Ramsey thing again? I, it was, wasn't it? Danny, I I don't know what you're talking. About. We're here to talk about HelloFresh. We have work okay. to do. We, okay. I mean, so I wish you, you would focus a little. Well, did you tell them then that HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant and it's even cheaper than grocery shopping? Well, I was getting to that, but I wanted them to smash the like. Did you tell them that HelloFresh offers over 50 weekly options to take the stress out of meal planning and prepping, like at the very least? Well, I would have, but they have to remember to subscribe. You're right, John. They should subscribe, but not to Lord and Ramsey, but to HelloFresh. This month, I had the Gouda Vibes Burger. I love that play on words, and it was delicious with their potato wedges. And click that bell icon so you're notified every time that Lord and Ramsey uploads. Honestly, you guys, he cannot control himself. Go to HelloFresh.com slash CrimeAfterCrime16 and use code CrimeAfterCrime16 for up to 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts for excellent restaurant quality meals every time. Go to HelloFresh.com slash CrimeAfterCrime16 and use code CrimeAfterCrime16 for up to 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. You guys, try America's number one meal kit today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, welcome back. I'm very interested to hear about this. I feel like this time, I know nothing about your story. I didn't even tell you what story I was doing. I just went in all willy-nilly there. 
Yeah, no. And uh, it's weird because I didn't bump into your story during my research. And I don't know if you did you bump into mine. I don't know if you did. I don't think I did. I mean, you just told me the name. That's all I had to go off of. And usually I just avoid it when I see it immediately like the plague. But I don't even remember running into that. Yeah. Well, uh, as we talked about, one of the toughest searches that we've done, Mm -hmm. uh, many stories, most of them extremely dark. In many cases, you can see how the criminal is so desperately reaching for fame. And I really don't want to be part of that goal in any way for them, Mm -hmm. which was another weird thing trying to research this. Like, I I want to find a case, but these guys are all asking for it, like begging for attention like idiots. I'm telling you, everything felt so conflicting and weird. (laughs) Yeah, um, but I came across the perfect, perfect story for today. See, YouTube doesn't only attract people looking to be famous. It also has become the modern day lottery ticket. All you have to do is go viral and you'll be swimming in ad revenue. But how do you go viral without even setting up a camera? What if you don't know how to edit? What if you have no creative ambition of any kind? Good luck. (laughs) Say hello to Ryan Stone. Oh, no. (laughs) Now, Ryan had a good rap sheet going since the age of 18 with some drug, vehicle theft, and assault occurrences in his young life. He'd recently recently come out of serving a four-year sentence for narcotics. Maybe it was time to take that criminal career in a different direction. Right, Danielle? Straighten yeah, it up. Yeah, probably time. Well, Ryan came up with what he considered the perfect YouTube scam. All of the fame and money and literally none of the work. There was just one little catch, a catch that not only royally screws over his plans, but makes me 100% comfortable in sharing his story We'll get to that a little bit later. It was early morning, March 12th, 2014. A red Ford Edge pulled up to a gas station on Main Street in Longmont, Colorado. A mother ran inside while her four-year-old son, Alan, sat in the back seat. When the mother came back outside, her red Ford Edge and Alan were gone. Now, I know a lot of people would be critical of leaving a child that young in a car, but a law enforcement representative told the press, quote, we're talking very short distances. Mm -hmm. It's not like she left her kid in the car for hours on Mm -hmm. end. She parked outside Mm -hmm. the business and she walked in and the guy jumped in her car. So we're talking maybe 15 or 20 feet. Yeah. And he was off. By 7.15 a.m., an Amber Alert was issued, and thankfully, the Ford Edge was spotted, heading south on Interstate 25. Within moments, police cars were following, as were news choppers, as the car theft and now child abduction unfolded on local television screens all over Colorado. The high-speed chase went through neighborhoods and onto another interstate in the Denver metropolitan area. At one point, the Ford Edge stopped in front of a gold minivan. The two people that were in the gold minivan jumped out, And our viral star, Ryan Stone, jumped in, ditching the red edge and thankfully leaving four-year-old Alan behind as he tore off and continued the chase. Swerving through traffic on and off the shoulders of the road, it was all fair game for Ryan. One news chopper was reporting that it was flying 117 miles per hour and it was having trouble keeping up with Ryan. Oh my goodness. Isn't that insane? I'm just thankful. That's that's incredibly fast. I'm thankful Alan's not in that vehicle at that point. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. So police knew this guy wasn't going to stop. They deployed stop sticks at two locations, but Ryan swerves around him. Further up, Colorado State Patrol trooper Bellman He was deploying another set of stop sticks. He sees this gold minivan coming up fast, really fast, like 100 miles per hour fast. Trooper He starts running towards the guardrail at the side of the road. The minivan actually swerves towards the trooper. Oh, no. Yeah. He got clipped and he was shunted under a nearby guardrail. Like it it bumped him and basically sends him flying under this guardrail. Experts would say that if he was facing the other direction as he made contact with the car, that he would be dead. Uh, Quote. Idiot. Gosh, this makes me so mad. Yeah. Well, it's Ryan Stone. Mm -hmm. Uh, quote, what we were trying to do was make sure citizens were safe, but we could still apprehend this guy. Uh, he was not going to stop committing these crimes said under Sheriff Spurlock with the Douglas County Sheriff's office. And Ryan was starting to get a little sloppy 
The minivan was smoking. He was hitting more and more cars. He stopped at one point, jumped out, waved his hands around like he was waving at the news copters and then jumped back in and took off again. Apparently, thinking that he was playing the video game Grand Theft Auto, he hit yet another car, a silver sedan. Uh, he runs up to the driver's side door, throws the female driver out of her own car, jumps in, and starts speeding off. But the woman, her name is Zune Wharton, she ran after the car, tried to open the door, but the speed was too much, and she was shoved away as the car goes taking off. She would later tell the press, when he pulled me out, I realized... He's jumping in my car. He's going to mm -hmm. take off. And instinctually, I don't know why, I tried to grab back on. What the heck was I thinking? <laughs> I'm telling you. And those moments, though, you don't know. Your brain says to do something and you usually just do it. <laughs> she was going for it. She was going to reopen that door. And then, like, yeah, what seriously. happens next? She's going to I know. Him, what are you going to do after that? <laughs> pull him out, throw him out. Uh, While the car's in motion. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I'm thankful that she recognized after. She's like, what yeah. was I thinking? Not yeah. to mention, like, her family is at home. I think it was her father, if I remember right, oh, is at home no. watching this on TV. Oh. And he's like, is that her car? And then he calls the husband, and the husband's like, oh, my God, that is the car. Uh, yeah, so the family is seeing this unfold live, basically, on television. Um, but thankfully, she was fine. She honestly didn't even yeah. get knocked over. The car just went okay, spinning good. off. And she yeah. kind of like rolled just off. Just like, woo. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the many lessons in this story, Danielle, I mean, if someone throws you out of the <clears> car, <throat> just let the car go. Okay, noted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Almost an hour into the chase, Ryan ran the sedan into several other cars and deciding that he needed more screen time, he took off on foot. While running, he peels off his yellow and black jacket and tosses it behind and around 8.08 a.m., he runs into a fence. He looks to his left and he saw an officer on foot about 20 feet, feet away. That was it. Ryan dropped into a position he was very familiar with, face down, hands behind his back. Honestly, after an hour of all this nonsense and being this super criminal, whatever he thought he was, to see the footage of how he folds. He just he like, ah! He just completely folds, Danielle. Just like, oh no, there's a fence. Oh, there's a cop. Ah! <laughs> oh no <laughs> just completely folds so police now had him in custody and the chase which lasted nearly an hour went 75 miles across uh across five different counties Good involved grief. yeah involved him stealing three cars severely injuring a state trooper and abducting mm. a four-year-old boy had all Oof. finally come to an end now that's quite the list right there it's a good list for an hour yeah, yeah that's, that's a that's a that's a that's a big one you think there'll be a charge or two coming out of that yeah Ooh, yeah probably uh so trooper he's leg was shattered it was broken in 20 different places he was listed in serious condition he, he was taken into surgery immediately and thankfully his wounds were not fatal uh, he said after that he was very proud to wear the badge and he was hoping to return to full active duty as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. However, he was dealing with severe pain and it pushed those goals back a bit. Like he was oh, hoping to get sad. back. Yeah. He wanted to get back to work like within a, a month or two. Um, but he was having like really severe headaches and severe body pain, a man of faith. Uh, he was certain that someday he would be back and 21 months later, he did return to the job at full capacity. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time. That's a long time. Probably a really tough recovery uh, yeah. on the physical front, but also on the emotional front. You got this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, Ryan literally swerves across two lanes. Like you can see it in the footage. He, he could have just completely gone zipping by this guy. Everything would have been fine. Swerves across two lanes to hit him. I would um, have nightmares of that for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine he is. I imagine he is dealing with something yeah. like, like just your loss in humanity, like the feeling of mm -hmm. like, really, this is how we take care of each other here. Yeah. Um, Ryan, he had a very different take on that moment in the story. He uh, mm -hmm. discussed it with his mother on a call that was recorded in jail. And he said, quote, the dumbass is standing in the middle of the highway. That's that's how he told his mother about uh, why he hit Trooper He. People like that scare me so bad. Yeah. Uh, four-year-old Alan, checked by medical personnel, given 
a police officer teddy bear that's super cute by the way oh, and okay good was reunited with his family at the brighton police station just uh, a few hours after this whole ordeal but the chase was only the start of ryan stone's plan he had planted the seed danielle and he needed it to grow and grow it did soon news websites and youtube channels were showing clips from the high-speed chase and the story wasn't only going national it was going international how would he benefit from all this danielle that's what i'm trying to figure out this whole time <laughs> i'm like how? what how are you gonna what are you yeah well uh maybe we need to hear a clip from news 7 denver breaking it all down let's see here just released recordings reveal he wanted to profit from all of the clicks of the chase received on our own Denver 7 YouTube channel. Yeah. My lawyer told me I made the news in the UK and Australia. You get paid by YouTube. So, uh, Channel 7 News, I believe, is going to be the one that gets paid for that. Well, um, I'm going to contact Channel 7 News. <laughs> I love the laugh at the start. <laughs> yeah. I am speechless. The audacity. <laughs> Who creates a plan like that? A oh, I'll just do this and then I'll tell the news that, that recorded it. I get your YouTube revenue. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's an officer who can't go back to work. And he's like, <laughs> I know. I know. Oh. I know. You know I was... those moments that you have where you're like, if I had like a free pass to fight somebody. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And I not almost... get in trouble for it, it'd be him. I gotta play this sound again. <laughs> Hold on a second. How did how did he go, Danielle? That was that was the part. <laughs> yeah. My lawyer told me I made the news in the UK and Australia. You get paid by YouTube. So uh, Channel 7 News, I believe, is going to be the one that gets paid for that. Well, um, I'm going to contact Channel 7 News. <laughs> How so, narcissistic do you have to possibly be? Oh, well. Uh, I made the news. And all yeah. these, like, how, oh, and he sounds so proud. Yeah. Can you imagine? Like, the dude's in jail while that conversation's going on. Uh, yeah, Danielle, so some stories I'm seeing on this say that his actual plan was he was going to file copyright strikes mm. on all of the videos showing the high-speed chase. Now, I mentioned at the start of this story, there's a problem with this plan. Well, a here lot it of is. Problems with it. Yeah, uh, copyright doesn't protect facts. No, copyright does not protect news facts, quotes, nope. any Fair of that. Fair use. No, no, yeah. no. Mm -mm. Nope. Uh, news coverage is largely reporting on true facts which is how this whole social media true crime thing that danielle and i are in even exists that's why we're able to talk about these other cases because we're talking about facts really mm -hmm. copyright is essentially for creating original works exactly like an original work of art of some kind so um outside he of thinks that, what he did was an original work of art like something I think he beautiful does. gosh I think, I think he does i think he yeah. thinks that he created those moments so that yeah the, that's all his intellectual property um as, i'm gonna need some time after this to genuinely sit <laughs> i have never been so affected by someone we've spoken about before all i can say danielle is yeah oh gosh no <laughs> <laughs> uh, outside of that, as Danielle pointed out, in America, we have laws about fair use. Essentially, we can even use copyrighted works if it's commentary that transforms the original work in some way. That's how we have reaction videos. Mm -hmm. That's how we can use clips for memes. Um, so yeah, it's his, his knowledge of copyright, not, not one of his good. strong points. <laughs> yeah. Those copyright strikes would have gone nowhere. Yep. Uh, someone else going nowhere is Ryan mm -hmm. Stone. So yep. what happens with this case? Well, Jeff Sater with the Longmont Police Department told the press, Stone already had a warrant for his arrest and he's facing numerous charges. As a matter of fact, just the night before, the night before this whole debacle, uh, they found his girlfriend in a stolen car and she was like, well, he, he's the one that did it. 
So he was identified as a suspect in that car theft from the night before. Maybe the explanation to all of this is that he wanted this much money to spend at the canteen. <laughs> that was the only thing I can think of because he had to have known he was not going to be a free man. <laughs> he wants uh, to buy some ramen noodles really bad. A Danielle, lot of even out. Hold on. The week before. So the week before this, not just the okay. night before, uh, he was supposed to be arrested. He was at a hearing for some of his other charges, okay. and he just walked out. He just walked out of the hearing. So that's where his warrant comes from. Rules don't apply to this man. No. Uh, law enforcement reported that after the high-speed chase, Stone was being checked out at Sky Ridge Hospital, and they were planning on charging and incarcerating him in Douglas County. Uh, mm -hmm. They also said that they were going to determine if he was intoxicated or under the influence of any substances as part of their investigation. Spoiler warning, some of his previous charges are related to methamphetamine use. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, his family put out yeah. a little bit of a statement about, you know, it's not really his fault. And it was really just leaning into he's dealing with drug addiction issues. Uh, he would be held on bonds totaling $3.5 million. Now, some people in the press were actually asking, did law enforcement push this chase too far? especially after they got the little boy mm -hmm. back. Uh, Under Secretary Tony Spurlock told the press, we had to apprehend this guy. We were in constant communication with all law enforcement agencies involved. All of them helped hold traffic, blocked intersections, and we did everything we could to make sure no citizens were in harm's way, although they were, because quite frankly, he rammed them. Yeah. End quote. Yeah. Well, and on top of that as well, granted hindsight's twenty twenty. no one could have known this at the time, but if he wasn't doing it to run per se, like he was doing it because he had a goal. He never would have stopped. If they yeah. stopped chasing him, he would have created more reasons for them to chase him. He this was his plan things, to get caught. Yeah. Exactly. He would have pushed things so much further, which I don't, I mean, the thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no telling how much worse it could have been had they not continued. I'm telling you, that moment where you see him fold and lay down, like it's because it was his plan the whole time. Yeah. He knew that he was going to get caught, so he was going to do it on his terms instead of be pulled over the next time he was sitting in yeah. a stolen car mm -hmm. or with narcotics or, or something like that. Well, Ryan Stone has plenty of time to think about his next YouTube scam. A jury convicted Stone of 18 charges, 11 of them felonies, including Good. attempted manslaughter, mm -hmm. which I'm so thankful they got in there. I was about and, to say, as they should. <laughs> yeah. And first degree assault for injuries sustained by Trooper He and child abuse mm -hmm. for the reckless endangerment that happened around four-year-old Alan as well. In court. That poor kid. Yeah. In court, a very different Ryan Stone showed up. Of course, he was crying. He's very upset. This one's a little hard to make out, but we're going to play it, and then I'll tell you what he said, just in case you, you don't quite get it. Are you making time to start a family of my own? With my beautiful wife. Okay. Now, you saw... <laughs> it's very different from the earlier clip we had of him, right? <laughs> well, YouTube... We went from that to. I pray you leave me time to start a family of my own. With my beautiful wife. Okay, so what he's saying is, I pray you leave me time to start a family of my own. Yeah, I heard that. With my beautiful mm -hmm. wife. And to that, I say, no. Exactly. <laughs> we don't need another stone. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. I don't even know how to feel about that. Like, I can't, there's no way that was genuine, no. I don't think. But then there's part of me that's like, was he really just that dumb? Like, that thick in the brain? Or he just genuinely thought, there, but there's no way. There's no way. Danielle, well, put yourself <laughs> in the seat of the jury. And know this, the jury was shown those videos from the clips that we played earlier, where he's talking yeah. to his, his girlfriend. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they saw that. <laughs> and then they see this side of him. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, yeah, I don't think they bought any of it. Uh, the woman that he pulled out of the car, Zune Wharton, she said, put him away forever. I think he's done enough. He's mm -hmm. lucky no one died from this. She's 
Absolutely right. Yeah, it came really close. <laughs> yeah. At Ryan's sentencing, Douglas County District Judge Paul King said, you held this community hostage for 90 minutes that day. And then he sentenced Ryan to 160 days in prison. No, Wait. I was waiting Wait. for years. No, Did no, no, I no, say no, no, days? no, 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 I meant my 160 months. No, you said days. Oh, no. 160 years, Danielle. Ooh, okay. That's what I was like cheering for. And then I heard days and about passed out. <laughs> I was hoping to trick you there. You would. I'm. Oh, can whew. you believe uh, Danielle? 160 years in prison he won't be eligible from parole for mm -hmm. unle unless for at least 75 years putting Good. him at the age of 105 before he's even eligible for parole now can you think for a moment put yourself in ryan's shoes you're 105 you're just released from prison and you're trying to start a youtube channel like that's <laughs> it's very hard <laughs> It might be too much. Maybe it might it's be too, too much. much. It's probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think the YouTube's going to be around in 2090. No, let's be honest. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> be like Jetflix. We'll call it New Tube. Jetflix. <laughs> Just like change things around a little bit. Create yeah. a new one. <laughs> Gear TV. Finally. <laughs> I got to get on Gear TV, Danielle. We got to make oh the jump. Oh my gosh. Uh, the DA put it bluntly. This guy is a menace. He yeah. is gone from us now. Mm. And we are better for it. Oh. Wow. Holy <laughs> smokes. Dude. I mean, no one held back. <laughs> no one. No one's impressed by this guy. Not in the slightest. You know why? <laughs> exactly. Who's taking that seriously? Good grief. Oh. Uh, thank you. And for what? I know. I know. <laughs> what what <laughs> for for copyright strike? Ad revenue, Daniel. I know, and I hate I hate to break it to him, but he probably wouldn't have got that much money. <laughs> no, at the end of the news segment, they were they uh, they said that the original video they put up about him had 150 thousand views, which would have equated to like maybe three or no no they didn't even say this they said that if it got a million views that they then would have made somewhere between three and four thousand dollars on it, which I think they're underestimating a little bit, but still. 150,000 views for the original post. He he put no research no. behind what he was doing. Like, no thought, no research. Didn't understand the main components of his but, own crime. Honestly, I don't... I feel like that conversation... And it's weird because we're only looking at a very small clip of it. Mm -hmm. I feel like that conversation is just him BSing his girlfriend. Him just yeah. kind of making this story about why he did all this. But the thing is, then I can't really justify why he did because yeah. it's so obvious his intent is not that he's going to get away from these guys he's just out there stealing cars having the time I of his about life to say, where was he wanted for the canteen like what did he yeah. think he was going to do with the money after doing that i don't know i can't understand the motivation in this in any way but honestly i was shocked 160 years that is a huge that's a big set Danielle, we see down. we see people <clears throat> that get manslaughter convictions that get like 15 years yeah 30 years like mm -hmm. this 160 if anything i do have to say more sentences like this please yeah seriously yeah seriously Harsher sentences more for of these that deserve it <laughs> yeah maybe this is gonna stop some other kid that sees this story and goes exactly. oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get on the news and then hit them for their mm -hmm. ad revenue. Yeah, because what do you think the chances are, though, that he thought this out and he's looking at previous crimes and people have been sentenced like a wrist slap and seriously, you know, yeah. some yeah. time of, away for a break instead of actual charges that will dramatically affect the rest of your life. Well, I do imagine that his criminal history helps this type of sentence happen because yeah. he was already in so much trouble. Mm -hmm. He'd already just fled from being arrested the week before they're finding this trail of stolen cars at this yeah. point. And he had previous convictions for, for theft uh, for, of, of an automobile Yeah, and all the drug stuff wrapped, wrapped up around it. But honestly, there's how many cases do you look into Danielle, where you hear about the backstory of the criminal and you're like, how was he even free to do this crime? Mm-hmm. Almost every single one, I kid you That's not. what I mean. So this is like, this is a shock yeah. because it's actually the flip. It's actually, mm -hmm. it's almost like, is it too much? Probably not for this guy, but yeah. 160 years in prison. That's a big one. 
for a one hour joyride where you almost kill mm -hmm. a trooper and kidnap a kid. Ooh. Mm. Quite the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dang, right. John. You like that one? That was a big one. Yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. Well, I knew this was going to be an interesting episode. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I got to thank uh, Denver 7, the <clears throat> Denver channel who reported on this case extensively and gave us that amazing video and audio clip that I'm going to keep forever. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> as well as Reuters, Westward, and RespondersSafety.com. A big thank you to RespondersSafety.com because they were actually reporting on Trooper He and the aftermath and how mm -hmm. he was doing with all that. And I really appreciate that someone puts that part of the story out there too, that he does survive and get back to his career, even if it takes yeah, almost two years. That's insanity. And he yeah. thought he was going back in a month. That makes me yeah. feel so sorry. Yeah, but he loves his job. I'm really happy he could be there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And for me, I forgot to mention it before, but a mm -hmm. huge thank you to New York Times, Fox 29, Inquirer, NJ.com, Washington Post, and Torrent Freak, because you have to have something like that report on a crime yeah. like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we are running over, but we're going to keep this train going. We got a few extra stories to share with you guys. And I'm going to start it off talking about collabs, Danielle. Oh, boy. Collabs. You know the importance of a collab. As a matter of fact, the show that you're watching right now is a collab. A dang collab. That's Great. right. <laughs> they bring two audiences together and help creators not feel like they're alone with their dumb YouTube prank ideas. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. Dumb mm -hmm. YouTube prank it. idea. Two fitness it. YouTubers, Brandon Carter and Connor Murphy, thought that they would be a two-person flash mob. But instead of just showing up somewhere and dancing, they were going to show up somewhere, fight each other, and then break into a dance. See, because that'd be funny, Daniel, if you were watching and two guys are fighting and all of a sudden they start doing choreographed dance. You get it? Oh, boy. Do you get it? Oh, yeah, totally. Well, they went to Austin, Texas. They found a thriving, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they found a thriving bar scene there with streets that were closed off and filled with people. Almost looks like something like a light version of Mardi Gras that you might see. People yeah. are like walking mm -hmm. in the streets, and they find their location. They start filming. They start fighting. But before the dance could happen, they were both taken to the ground by Austin PD. <laughs> Understandably, imagine that. <laughs> and arrested. <laughs> Um, honestly, Danielle, this is a really interesting because of the challenge we've been talking about, mm -hmm. about talking about these dumb stories where people are looking for attention and giving them attention in some way sucks for this mm -hmm. story. I, the media doesn't want to talk about it at all. I can't find yep. any news articles about it. I see the footage, like Good. they've got <laughs> it hosted on their channel. I, I'm seeing them get arrested. Um, but I can't tell you what happened. If any charges were filed, I have no idea. And quite honestly, for all we know, it could be that the cops were uh, actually cast. Maybe this whole thing was a prank. I don't know. Because you, oh, you got I things sure like this. Not. Oh, boy. Like, remember this time where I did that prank video where I was dressed oh, up as a cop? <laughs> no. John. You don't remember that? Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know here's the thing about me and my extra stories <laughs> mm -hmm. i love to throw in the questionable ones right yeah but there's technically like no charges half the time like only like somewhat relate but i cannot but stop thinking think, about Daniel. it they well exactly and yeah. they make me think because I, I can't ever stop thinking about them after i see them and so i have to share them because that's just how i express myself right this one's freaking crazy and there's probably going to be charges and i honestly hope there are because it drives me mad, okay? So, as we've said about 100 times in this entire episode, I will never understand the things that people do for views, especially when it can put people in danger. So, last December, YouTuber and Olympian Trevor Jacob filled himself, filmed himself flying his private plane over the mountains in the Midwest, okay? Something that was pretty normal for him to do. Yeah. Now, a sad twist of the story, a close friend of his had passed away. He was saying he was going to spread the ashes over the mountain. You think this is going to be a beautiful video, right? All of a sudden, in the middle of it, the propeller stopped spinning. And conveniently, Trevor Jacob has a parachute on his back already. 
and he immediately jumps out of the side of the plane. Now, also conveniently, he has a GoPro on him, a GoPro stick. Cameras are attached all on the exterior of the plane. And so every possible angle of this seemingly dangerous escape, this near death experience is captured. He ends up jumping to safety, films himself being rescued, finding the wreckage because his plane by itself crashed in the middle of the mountains, okay? Posts it to YouTube saying, I'm so lucky to be alive, right? <clears throat> YouTube police came. <laughs> YouTube police came very quickly. So pretty much right away, he was called out by not just critics, like fans, people looking at this saying something's off about this, but actual pilots that are like, nobody flies with a parachute strapped to their back. Right. Basically saying this was all done for views. You literally you crashed, crashed a, plane. a dang plane for views. For views. Oh my God. Which, by the way, over 2 million of them so far oh, probably more because it's been all over the news like as of a month ago yeah so this ended up leading to a probe by the federal aviation administration <laughs> after they're sent this video people being like what the heck this man does not need to be operating a plane anymore and ultimately just a few months ago they ended up taking away his license saying quote you demonstrated mm -hmm. a lack of care judgment and responsibility by choosing to jump out of an aircraft solely so you could record the footage of the crash yes yes give him 160 years i say <laughs> so i doubt that's gonna happen <laughs> okay. but he still claims he didn't do it intentionally i mean the aviation fed i can't remember exactly what it was the federation i don't know anyways yeah, but they yes they essentially were like you had cameras strapped to the wings like they were like you the the, the thing went out and before you didn't put out a distress call, you didn't do any of the typical steps of trying to figure out if the, like you screamed the engine was failing and the engine, you can hear it still. Like you, it had been like turned off or something. Like they were like, there's, you're full of crap basically. Now they, no one's addressed basically if there is a current criminal investigation into it. I can guarantee you that there probably is. Yeah. Um, they're just be. not saying anything about it um, because this crash presented a massive danger not just to him but what mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what if there was someone hiking or what if there was exactly. someone exactly yeah yeah or it went further than he anticipated yeah and like yeah. hit someone's house crashed on a highway i mean there's so many different things that could have gone wrong and he he had no control over those things and never yeah. would have yeah wild yeah. i'm telling you i had to share it there's no charges yet I'm sure there will be eventually, but I was like, I'm saying this because if you're willing to crash your plane for some YouTube views, whoo, yeah. especially when you preface it by saying that you're trying to do something like that for a friend, eh, ugh, yeah. yuck. Yeah. I don't like it. <clears throat> uh, I, I heard an audio clip of when he was uh, being questioned and he responded, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, no. <laughs> Anyone with that laugh, 160 years. <laughs> Well, this was a big one. Who do you guys think is going to win? All right. These were good stories. Mm -hmm. I don't know. John, I think you might take the cake again. Last month, you rocked it. This month, you're rocking it. Mm. But it you guys are the 50, ones who 50. get to vote. Remember. Well, if it did last time. I know. I know. We have no idea how these are going to go. We need them to tell us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can vote at the Twitter account at Crime After Pod for seven days, and I'll make I'll make sure it's seven days this time <laughs> after the episode drops. Or you can also head over to www.crimeaftercrimepodcast.com, and you can vote there. We also have a link in the description box, and you can still click the little letter I, and it'll take you straight to the voting. At Crime After Crime Podcast, you'll find all the links you ever need, including where to find more content by Danielle and myself, how to suggest show topics, join our Patreon, or shop our Teespring store. You guys, huge thank you to our patrons. As always, I absolutely love doing the Patreon special. You guys get a bonus Patreon special segment monthly. We talk about all sorts of things, get things off our chest. You get to know us. Plus, our patrons get a personal shout out and an upcoming Patreon special. We will be back next month with one I'm looking forward to. This is going to be mm -hmm. an interesting search. I think it'll be easier a little Hopefully. bit than this one. Petty Revenge Crimes. 
Mm. I think we're going to see some very dingusy things in this episode. <laughs> 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 we got to work on our on our laughs, Danielle. We got to make sure to get those in. <laughs> <laughs> this show is produced and hosted by myself, Daniel Allen, and the amazing John Lorden. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on. And the best way you can help others find us is to tell them. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone that you love crime after crime. And thank you for doing that. We appreciate it. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.